Welcome and thank you for watching this video. Um, this is a follow-up to the other videos you have watched. These are important key concepts that living donor kidney transplant uh, candidates need to know. What we do have available is uh, 50 plus years of transplant data. Um, there are four phases of informed consent that review all possible risks of donation. Um, a potential donor is healthy, voluntary, and meets Northwestern's written selection criteria. It's important to know that it, it is illegal to convince or bribe someone to donate an organ. Federal law prohibits valuable consideration of any kind. This includes cash, vacations, and property. Um, again, a potential donor is healthy, voluntary, and meets Northwestern written selection criteria. So who's a viable donor? Every donor will have an evaluation that includes a medical, surgical, psychosocial, and financial aspect, as well as age-appropriate cancer screening, according to American Cancer Society. And our team uh, includes an independent donor advocate, physicians, surgeons, social workers, pharmacists, registered dietitians, and transplant nurse coordinators. Information that we gather um, will not be shared um, with your recipient. The charts are kept separate and confidential. The donor responsibilities include completing a medical workup if approved for donation and following up per Northwestern's protocol at specific times. Responsibilities of the transplant team include completing the evaluation, using Northwestern selection criteria to make a decision, and explaining and sharing the results with the patient. Evaluation includes medical, psychosocial, and financial evaluation. The evaluation process is ongoing, beginning with identification of an individual as a possible candidate and continues until donation. Routine reassessments may be conducted as needed. After evaluation, the team may find you are able to donate and you could also be ruled out for your safety for a specific medical or psychosocial reason. There are factors that prohibit a donor from donating, and the reasons are listed as absolute con contraindications in Northwestern selection criteria. This will be given to you. It may also be determined that you need additional follow-up or evaluations based on your test results. If we find that you are unable to donate based on our selection criteria, you can still go to another transplantation center to be evaluated using different criteria. Donation may improve a recipient's quality of life and also extend it. For more details, please see the liver recipient educational video. The potential risk of evaluation. Uh, allergic reactions, reactions to contrast, discovery of reportable infections, discovery of serious medical conditions, discovery of genetic findings or other abnormal, uh, abnormalities which may require further testing at the donor's expense. Donor factors that increase risk are obesity and high blood pressure. The technical aspects will be reviewed in the following donor liver educational video. The surgeon will explain the surgery. Length of stay, recovery, and when daily activities may be resumed is discussed in the living donor liver educational video. There are specific follow-up appointments for donors at one week, six months, one year, and two year post donation. Follow-up data is required to be reported to the United Network of Organ Sharing. And there are potential risks to donation, including medical, psychosocial, financial, and surgical that will be reviewed in the overview of living kidney donation, as well as during your four phases of informed consent. On average, donors will have a 25 to 35 percent permanent loss of kidney function. Baseline risk of ESRD does not exceed that of members of the general population with the same demographic profile. Risk of ESRD for living kidney donors may exceed that of healthy non-donors with medical characteristics similar to living kidney donors. If chronic kidney disease or ESRD occurs, CKD generally develops in midlife, 40 to 50 years old, and ESRD develops after age 60. The evaluation of a potential donor cannot predict the risk of developing CKD or ESRD. Donors may be at high risk for CKD if he or she sustains damage to the remaining kidney. The development of CKD and progression to ESRD may be more rapid with only one kidney. 
Dialysis is required, required when reaching ESRD. Potential specific kidney-related risks uh, continued was uh, UNO's current practice is to prioritize prior living kidney donors who become kidney transplant candidates. Disclose to all female donors the risk of preeclampsia or gestational hypertension are increased in pregnancies after donation. Donors are counseled about recommendation of waiting for 12 months post-donation to become pregnant and that pregnancy is an absolute contraindication to donation. So not all donors experience financial hardship and we do our best to mitigate the risk of experiencing financial difficulties. Um, but there's that risk of potential financial impact. So uh, personal expense of travel, housing, childcare costs, and lost wages related to donation may not be reimbursed. However, resources may be available to defray some donation-related costs. Need for lifelong follow-up at the donor's expense, loss of employment or income. You may have a negative impact on the ability to obtain future employment, and there may be a... Um, there may have a negative impact on the ability to obtain, maintain, or afford health, disability, and life insurance. Future health problems experienced by a living donor may not be covered by the recipient's insurance. The fact that if the transplant is not provided in a Medicare-approved center, it could affect the patient's ability to have his or her immunosuppressive medications paid for by Medicare Part B. And there's the cost of cancer screening. Survival outcomes for transplant recipients can be found on the Scientific Registry for Transplant Recipients, or the SRTR. Uh, and you could find that at www.srtr.org. Uh, recipient one-year patient and graph survival outcomes, center-specific and national, that's what you'll find in the SRTR. Uh, the data is not available for donors. Um, if you have questions, please ask your transplant nurse coordinator. Alternatives to treatments for the recipients. Uh, a deceased donor may become available for the recipients before the donor evaluation is completed or the living donor transplant occurs. Any transplant candidate may have a risk factors for increased complications or death that are not disclosed to the potential donor. And outcomes for recipients depend on the medical status of the patient and cannot be predicted. Uh, UNO's uh, United Network of Organ Sharing, um, if you need to contact them, their hotline number for grievances are 1-888-894-6361. Thank you for watching.